There are many ways to approach designing something in CAD, and everybody has their own strategies and styles. What I chose to do is start at the very bottom of the fractal press, meaning I'm going to actually model the feet, the things that touch the fret. I want the width of these feet to basically be able to cover the entire fret, so I'm starting there. And then I start with the most basic ingredient, and the most basic ingredient is the bolt. So I downloaded these M3 button head bolts from a caster car. This gives me the diameter. I now know the diameter of that button head. And once I do, I can actually start designing the foot around it. So the diameter of that bolt dictates the diameter of these triangular circles on each of the corners. So once I've done my extrusion, I can then do my cuts and then I get this. So these M3 bolts are just for visual purposes and for design purposes. Clearly, they're not long enough. So here's the beautiful thing about CAD. You only have to design something once, and then you can actually pattern it. And I can make my four feet. And then I can actually add my bolts. So in this case, what was important was distributing these feet so that they were spaced apart by two millimeters. So I wanted the distribution of these bottom feet to be the width of the last fret on a six-string fretboard. So now that I have my feet, I can design the middle interlocking layer. And this is the steel layer. So this allows me to sketch it out, extrude, and ensure that it actually fits in with the rest of the feet. And again, I design it once and I pattern it to the left and I get another one and I can add my bolts. So we're now at the point where we have to design the middle part. At least I'm calling it the middle part. And this is where I sort of veered from the traditional design of the fractal press. So this is very similar to how the fractal presses are designed, but it's just a little bit different. And I think this is where you can take some sort of artistic license with designing something like this, because really what you're looking for is having these pieces being able to articulate properly. So you want them to be able to move freely left and right. So your cuts have to accommodate them. But then everything after that is just sort of cosmetic. So the next part now is the main fork. At least I'm calling it that. Again, all I'm looking for is for clearance so the parts can actually articulate properly. This is a larger bolt that's holding this fork to the middle section. So I'm using a M4 bolt. It's a little bit of, of a beefier bolt, right? So if you really think about what the stress points are on this device, you have to think about these bolts that are running perpendicular to the actual fret. So the last part now is to add the shaft. Very similar to J. Edwards and all the clones and counterfeits. It's just a shaft. I made the indent. What mine does not have is the hollow portion because on the J. Edwards and on the counterfeit uh, one from Amazon, you have to have a hole here to accommodate a long screwdriver to screw in the screw that connects the shaft to this fork. It's necessary. And I am 3D printing this, so I don't need that. I'm going to 3D print this and that as one piece. All right, so we have our fractal press. This is what it looks like. So there is the fractal fret press designed in CAD, and we're going to 3D print it. So what I do is I export each piece individually, and then I import them into my slicer software. Let's get to that part. Uh, rather than go full 100% infill, which would be way too brittle if it's solid, I'm choosing 70%. And for the actual infill pattern, I'm changing it to cubic because I hear that that is a stronger pattern, but what do I know? And then for the perimeter walls, I'm choosing eight instead of the six. So I wanted to show you my slicer settings. If I scroll down, you can see that the used filament comes down to 13.94 grams. So that gives you an indication of how cheap and inexpensive this is to print. So it's perfectly fine if one, this experiment fails, two, it works, but the feet are then basically degraded over time because you could easily print more, or three, many of the pieces are crushed when we actually press down on the arbor. Again, we could easily replace this. So what if we could get at least half a fretboard out of this or one fretboard out of this or or none, well, I don't know.
All right, so here is my 3D printed rectal press, and it is 70% infill, and there are eight perimeter walls, and the infill type is, I believe, cubic, but we're gonna give this a shot, see if this works. So let's press a couple of frets in and see if it collapses and crushes with the weight and pressure of the press, or if it actually presses the front down into the wood. All right, so video editing Mark here, talking to you from the future. And I noticed a cool thing when I was editing, the macro lens is capturing all sorts of truth. Truth that I couldn't see with my eyes. So you're gonna hear me say a bunch of wishy-washy things. I can't see, like you can't really see what's happening that close. But just trust the macro lens, trust your scene, just forget what I'm saying because I don't know what's going on. All right, back to the show. All right, here we go. I'm gonna press the sucker in. In one press, I'm gonna see what happens. Hopefully it doesn't just crack and crush. That is not seated, right? Is that seated? I can't tell. So it looks like that one corner here didn't get seated, but I can't tell just looking. I can't tell right now from my perspective if that's seated. We're gonna look at these frets after the fact, but I wanna do a couple more. Let's do some more. I hammered the edge in of this one. Let's go ahead and do this. Let's make sure everything is lined up. really see like the stress points already happening. So already when I press down, I can see these things twisting in this axis direction. And there's already probably a little twist on some of these bolts. All right, here we go. All right, and again, we're gonna look at these afterwards. We're gonna put another fret in. I feel like I'm doing a lot of um, eyeballing to make sure it's straight, which I don't have to do with the brass versions. I really feel like there's already a twist in this too. Like, I feel like it's not straight anymore, but let's keep going. There's some a weird sound there. I'm gonna do another one. There you go. All right, let's do another one because I heard a weird sound that maybe sounded like a crack. So let's try to do one more and see if this one cracks. All right, again, I'm gonna do another one in real time. I don't know how many I've done. Is this my number four? I think so. Like how many can I do before it really just fails is the question. Like that's seated and I, I want to press more. Like I want to go down more, but I'm scared. So there's certainly like a fear of um, pressing down too much, which I don't have with the brass ones, but let's do another one. So again, 70% infill, eight perimeter walls. I see that something sounded really funny there. Well, let's do another. All right. So that could be having like stress cracks happening and not even know it. See, right there it's seated, but I want to press down more to ensure it, but it's, I'm so scared to. And then the last fret, this is the 22nd or 24th fret, I'm not sure. Last one. Okay, here we go. And I'm gonna stop. And for this one, I mean, again, I could just keep, I could keep like doing all the way, you know, the way these things are supposed to work, but I'm just doing this baseline first. Cause to me, it looks like the corner's not seated, but we'll look under magnification. All right, this is the last fret we did, which is the last fret on the fretboard. All the way to the end. And I didn't trim the end, I was just being really lazy here. So it's just, <laughs> you get the idea. Right, second to the last one there. There's the third one. There's the fourth one. I think we did four. 
or did we do more than four? I don't know. Yeah, I think we did two that were trimmed. That one. That one. So there was a fear of pushing down too much. Like uh, once it was, once I thought it was seated, I wanted to stop because I was really scared that anything else would start to kind of crush the PLA. I don't have very much confidence in it. That was basically it, just a lack of confidence. So let's take a close look at the actual feet and if there's any stress cracks anywhere, because I think there is. This is so unscientific. <laughs> I don't even remember how many frets I pressed. Like, I have zero memory. Maybe it was four or five or six. I don't know. Uh, so here's the first foot, and you can see the dents. So I actually was hearing cracks, right? And I was like, where are those cracks coming from? And I figured out where they're coming from. So check it out. Here's the next foot with the indentations on the PLA. And here's the source of the crack. This foot here cracked along the layer lines. So, you got, that's the layer line. And I mean, I think this is the way you want the layer lines to go, right? You want them to go in that direction? I think for strength, or should I make them the other way? I don't know. Um, in terms of like 3D printing and strength that's concerned, I'm really, I don't have any knowledge. And then, there's this last one here, and there's also some indentations in there. You clearly see there's something going on with the way the actual print occurred in the feet. So there's this seam that stops right there, and it's kind of like a main layer line there, and that's where it cracked. So this might just be really my lack of knowledge on how printing actually works. But here's a good example. You have this kind of seam but it's on every single foot. Like, it's the same pattern. I don't know what the heck is doing in the print to do that, like, in zero clue. But that's where it cracked here. Like, it cracked exactly at that point. So just maybe a different printing strategy would help it not crack. So these interlocking pieces that actually hold the feet are very thin. I think they're like three mil thin, so you can see how thin it is. That scared me the most. And that's actually the sturdiest to be honest, because I don't think there's any infill in here. <laughs> I think it's just like pure solid PLA. Um, so they were like the strongest pieces, which was really surprising. All right, I found another crack. So I took one of these locking nuts off and I found this crack here. These are the parts that I was always suspicious of, the bolts, because there's a lot of stress happening on the bolts. So this is where it cracked. Um, along these bolt lines, even with eight primaroles. But you can see how thin it is, like from the hole to the top, it's really not a lot of material. But again, the curious thing is not on the other side. So I'm gonna take the lock nut off the other side and you can see it didn't crack there, but look, there's a weird, I don't know what that is. Are those like stress lines or hard to say what that is. That was cool. I mean, I mean it was a fun test, wasn't it? This is all just for kicks and giggles, man. Like just to see what would happen. Right? What, what would happen if we use PLA? And obviously, like, I'm not even looking at the top of the frets. They're not scratched. I mean, that's just plastic, right? You know, some of the best YouTube videos, or the most entertaining at least, are the ones where they show a fail. And I think maybe this is one of those. Now, I just did this for kicks and giggles. Like, it, it was just a mental exercise to me to see if I could build this in CAD. Like, some people, like, do puzzles, some people do like Sudoku. I do CAD exercises and I just wanted to see if I could actually build one and I did. And I thought it would be really cool to actually see this fail on camera. I was pretty much 90% sure this was just going to crush under the weight of the press. But I was surprised. We did get away with about four or five frets. I know I wasn't terribly scientific and I know that my 3D printing strategies are not the greatest. Like, I'm just a novice at this. So I'm sure that there are better material filaments to use. I'm sure there are better settings to use. There's really a lot of ways you could probably strengthen something like this, but in the end, what was really lacking was confidence. I just didn't have the confidence to really torque down on that lever, like I do with the brass fractal presses. So that being said, I thought it was kind of fun, kind of just for kicks and giggles. 
and I hope you got some entertainment value out of it. Thanks for watching. Take it easy.